Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. So here's the thing. Yes. This is from a rep, sort of, right? Okay. I mean, he is a rep, but here's what happened. He's a rep that got. Yeah, there. this is Jason Chow. Okay. Right? So the crickets, he gets the silent treatment with well, the crickets. But here's the thing. Yes, I agree, but I'm going to add a caveat in there. Jason Chow is, uh, works at San Francisco Wine Trading Company. Okay. He's a spirits consultant and buyer for the past few months. Okay. And he says, uh, think it was watching our channel that that scaled up his whiskey knowledge and his ability. Oh, awesome. And his ability to get that gig and, and do things. Yeah, right on. Um, or he's learned a ton about what he's done from watching the channel. Right. Uh, and he also said that he's gotten to be a part of the store selection of Ooh, barrel pick that's products. That's always fun. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And he's that's really it. proud of it. Well, there, there's, there's been several MBs, right? They go in, they start talking shop with mm -hmm. the owners there. Yeah. Right? This is not, this is not you know, a unique situation. And the owners, they want people in their world who have a, a new perspective because if it's just them tasting, taste is so subjective. And they mm -hmm. know this. They're going to be choosing things that they like, but they don't necessarily know if all their customers are going to like it. So to bring in people that they know, they like, they trust, they have good conversations, they're knowledgeable. We've had MBs coming into stores, invited by the owners to mm -hmm. do selections for what should be on the shelves. That's cool. Now, he's actually employed there, right? He's yeah. not just a customer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, he, on his own dime, yes. Yes. purchased and sent us six bottles of their selection from their... Right? Okay. So what I mean is, yes, he works there, and yes. yes, this is something he helped create. Okay. I got you. But he bought it. This is, I got you. You ready? Yeah. You ready? We need to do the crickets, yeah. crank up the crickets. Crickets are going to be the underlayer of rep, of rep, of rep, right. what is it? Reppiness? Reppiness. Reppiness. Yeah. The underlayer of reppiness. As we do, Jason Chow. Mm hmm. You magnificent bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I was not prepared. I like that though. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the soundtrack. It's the soundtrack. It's the cricket soundtrack. Yeah. 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 Fair yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah. So this is Old Forester. Yep. The oldest exclusively available in bottles bourbon. So we're familiar with the Old Forester. Oh yeah, we like Old Forester. Sure, sure, yeah. But this is a single barrel. Yeah. Select. Old Forester. Now yeah. it is proofed down to 90 still. So it's 45 percent. Yeah, but it is a single barrel of from floor. Four, yeah. Warehouse One of Old Forester Bourbon. Man. Now, if I remember correctly, this is that 7218. Man, that bit, it's like just maritino cherries mashed and spread across a plank of oak. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly corn, 18% rye, 10% barley, if it's the same as their, I mean, yeah. There's some and, honey uh, drizzles on there. You got some oak, mashed maritino cherries, just get a butter knife, you just spread There's it across, and then drizzle there. the honey on. Yeah. Yeah, those are all the classic notes. Man, that's a lot of that's a lot of uh, body there for forty five percent alcohol. It is. It's rounded and rich. Yeah. In the nose, anyway. Oh, and now I'm getting like uh, almost a tobacco on that nose. Yeah, I, that's what I was looking for. I'm getting a non aromatic pipe, like a Cavendish, like a pipe tobacco. Yeah. Like a tin, where it's kind of musty, like the English. Musty, and then there's also We've, like this thin little accent of a mintiness on the nose for me. Yeah. I really love this nose. Are you getting that mintiness, mm -hmm. that kind of like uh, thread right there? I get what you mean by mint, yes. Oh, taste it and you're gonna find it in the palate like crazy. It is, mm. it's, a, it's yeah. a brown sugar cherry mint. How much? How with much? wood, with a little oaky note. Do we know how much rye is in there? 17, uh, 18 percent rye, okay, in, th in it, theory. That's a little surprising. I was expecting more because mm. I think I get a lot of that herbal quality that I often find them rather herbal spiciness. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fairly low on the rye front, but I think that can be synonymous parallel with that mint thread Alan that I'm finding. O old. Mm -hmm. Ah, of course the old forester is. And then that finish stays with you. Up, oh no, it's down here. I'm gonna pull another old forester. Yes, pull many old foresters. For science, and you go back and I'm getting less of that maritino cherry and more of that tobacco note with the honey for sure. Okay, I'm trying to get the most classic. So this is the 86 Old Forester. Yeah. Uh, so it's the closest to the 90 of this one, right? So what is, is that just, that just the proof? This just, yeah. This okay. is just the classic Old Forester, 86 proof. Now I'm starting to get the barrel tannins on the taste. Cheap. 
Oh, theirs is way better. Uh, even in the nose, that mint j explodes out of the glass all of a sudden. There's just a lot more you're working with. Yeah, yeah. and it's not it's not explained by the six per proof it's difference. Not, no, the the what'd you say the or four proof the eighty six. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite a bit more subdued. Yeah, whereas the it's not bad. It's just wine trading company has got it's just a vibrant lot. density. Yeah, if I had to pick it, for see. sure. Yeah, the classic old Forester. It's simple. It's just a decent, friendly bourbon. This one, even proofed down, is dramatic. Oh yeah. I mean, that's a huge improvement. If and again, I think in the in the direction that I prefer. Right. I for think, a bourbon. I think nerd curve direction. Mm -hmm. Right. If you're yeah. If you for, want complexity. If you want complexity, the one they chose definitely. Which makes sense because this is on. a special single barrel select. It's yeah. like no, this is aimed at whiskey Absolutely. nerds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like. Ah, I like it I a lot. I like that, but also I think the old Forester for um, people that just want something a little bit more uh, mm -hmm. familiar and classic, right? It's so easy. It is. I really love a bunch of their like Prohibition, 1920, and all their dated releases. Mm -hmm. But uh, just the classic old Forester is good too. Faux show. We got Tyler's life. I am new to whiskey and wondered if you magnificent bastards trusted buying whiskey online. Mm. I want some rarer bottles, but I've heard a lot of scams giving you bad whiskey. Also, what's a good beginner Isla? Okay, so online buying, state by state, that can be legal. Yeah, but this just let's assume it's legal. And I would say two things, which, by the way, this is a comment in Facebook. Uh, all of the MBs who commented gave him great advice. Okay. And so what I'm saying is has already been said to him in the comments by other people. Yeah. But I'm saying, in general, if you're looking at, if you're new to whiskey and you start thinking, oh, I could buy on the internet. Yeah. If you're, if you're just looking for convenience, stick to things like Master of Malt and the big brands that ship alcohol because they're fine. Sure. You can trust them. You know what you're getting. Right. You start going for rare bottles on auction sites and things like that. You are risking a lot. Right. There There's is a, a lot of potential for fraud. So, for example, we have two empty bottles of Macallan M. Mm-hmm. And beautiful, like crystal. Baccarat crystal. And that thing can sell for a few grand. Yeah, empty. empty because it's not because it's just such a valuable, you know, product. Um, because people who buy it probably are going to fill it with something else yep. and sell it for several thousand dollars. Yep. So, yeah, we, it's the reason why we haven't sold those because yeah. it would be used in a scam. Oh, yes, no, we would be totally complicit in fraud the moment we sold those McAllen M bottles. Right. Because, I mean, one of those bottles is worth anywhere between three and six grand, depending on the addition you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so we could sell the glass bottle for a grand. Somebody's going to flip that, fill it with something. We got Wade Miller. Anyone else just burn out for a bit? I usually have a couple glasses every night, but for several nights, I haven't even had the desire to have a nip. Yeah. I tried to go ahead and have a drink tonight, and it's a good thing I didn't pour much at all because I just didn't want it. That's a good thing. That is a good you thing. You don't need to be pouring something every night. And that help, that uh, happens to me a lot, Right. actually, especially after a day is here. Yeah. Like, I'll get home, and I'll think, ah, I'll have an end-of-day an end of day whiskey right. sounds like a good idea. Right. And then I'll pour just a little, right. and I'll set it on the counter, and then I'll start doing other things. You know what? I think, and then I completely forget I poured it. I think that's the mark of somebody who enjoys whiskey for the exploration part of it, yep. not because they have some emotional or biological need or craving for it. Right. I think that's fantastically healthy. Um, you and I, like ninety percent of the drinking we ever do ever is on our are on our channels on the yeah. vault on the whiskey tribe. Yeah. Um, and you know we have a tremendous amount of exploration we get to do. But um, I think I would be a little bit concerned if every night I went home. And like, then Man, also I drink. I can't wait to get that whiskey. Which is why, uh, oh, oh, dry practically, week. Dry Week also, starts tomorrow. Quarterly challenge for the Magnificent Bastards. But, but another thing, um, a practical reason why it's really good just to take, you know, take a little bit off. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't, if you're not in the mood, for sure don't make yourself drink the whiskey. But whenever you take breaks... Uh, it, it's like a reset for the palate. Yeah, it does do. It changes things. You come back to things a little bit more fresh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're often able to pick out nuances and layers that were just blowing past you before. Mm -hmm. Acclimating to certain categories, that's definitely a thing. You can right. become numb and blind to a lot of flavors there. But the quarterly challenge, the dry week is coming up. What are the dates? It's tomorrow. Okay. Starts at noon. Yes. That's May 8th, and it goes all the way through May 15th at noon. It's voluntary. Yep. And if you complete it, 
There's going to be a form that we'll link you to. You can fill out and join the group of Magnificent Whiskey Challengers. Yes, all of the Magnificent Bastards who joined us in Dry Week, you're going to be able at the end of it to put your name on a list, and we're going to put that on the website. We'll see you, Magnificent Bastards, on the other side. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may a fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us.